Was our universe born out of black holes? The latest findings from the James Webb Telescope could finally confirm the theories of Nobel Prize winner Sir Roger Penrose. Then, our picture of the universe would no longer be what it once was. We need to rethink and consider the birth of our cosmos within a black hole. The new James Webb Space Telescope has been in operation since summer 2022, and it's time to take stock of the unusual discoveries made by this telescope and, above all, to venture a look at what this now means for science and our cosmological view of the world. It all started with this deep space image of outer space. When NASA presented the image to the public for the first time, nobody had any idea what could really be seen here. Scientists knew that very old galaxies would be visible on the image because that is exactly what the telescope was built for. James Webb was supposed to look at the edge of the cosmic dawn and finally show us what the first stars and galaxies really looked like. But then something happened that nobody had expected. Deep analyses of the image suddenly showed rows and rows of galaxies that were far too old, too big, too small, too massive, or too faint to fit into the standard cosmological models. They simply shouldn't be there. These six galaxies are just about to break our picture of the early universe forever. These galaxies are almost as massive as the Milky Way and full of very old red stars. These galaxy discoveries, based on Webb's very first data release, are so distant that even the world's most powerful telescope can only see them as tiny reddish dots. Nevertheless, the low light is enough to draw much more important information from the color spectrum. This allows us to find out something about the age, size, and density of the galaxies. Here came the next shock, because these galaxies already existed when our universe was only 500 to 700 million years old. Such early galaxies are actually not that surprising, however, the first star clusters should have been far more chaotic, darker, and somehow smaller. At the time of their existence 13.1 to 13.3 billion years ago, the universe was supposedly just emerging from the so-called Dark Ages, and the first stars and groups of stars had formed. However, these six galaxies were probably already as big as our Milky Way at this time. The new findings are in stark contrast to existing ideas about what the universe looked like and how it developed in its early years. It had been expected to be small, blue baby galaxies at this time. After the discoveries, some scientists had to admit that their ideas were wrong or simply too specific. Are we looking at the oldest black holes? Science now has to reinvent itself, and researchers soon came up with exciting new ideas about what we are seeing. The most popular co-theory became that of supermassive black holes. The new idea sounds plausible, but if these six are not galaxies but black holes, we would also have another small cosmological problem. But let's first look at the details of why these could be black holes and not galaxies. These reddish dots could be the dust disks of very large black holes. In very massive black holes, these disks can shine just as brightly as galaxies. It's very likely that there are also some stars around the black holes, but they are outshone by the red light of the dust disks. The light of young stars, on the other hand, which would emanate from young galaxies, would shine blue as they age. When they burn off their fuel and cool down, stars develop a glow. If we are talking about galaxies that conform to current theories, they should be full of bright young stars. Researchers assume that the first protostars only had a very short lifespan. 500 or 700 million years after the Big Bang, there could well have been larger star clusters with these large, bright, and very young stars. But galaxies with old red stars are beyond the timeline of current models. Although these light sources are very old from our point of view, these objects were still very young at the time they existed, and measured against the overall age of the universe. However, the same also applies to supermassive black holes. According to our current theories, these objects take at least as long as galaxies to grow to such sizes. Once again, scientists are busy changing their views in line with the new findings. It's possible that stars in the early universe, due to their lack of heavy elements, emitted light in a much more exotic way. 
This would mean that the laws of physics were possibly different back then than they are today or that completely different elements existed. If this were true, our understanding of how stars formed in the early universe would probably be completely wrong. However, if we are dealing with black holes, we may not yet understand everything about how these objects came into existence. Black holes form after the collapse of stars, however, they probably also form from the direct collapse of gas clouds without a star being formed. Older than the universe. What would you say if black holes possibly outlived time and existed before the Big Bang? This is exactly what Sir Roger Penrose's exciting theory says. In one of his most famous works, the renowned researcher postulated the existence of structures in the universe that are possibly older than the known universe itself. This theory is called conformal cyclic cosmology and states that the universe exists in a series of infinite cycles. Each cycle begins with a big bang and ends in a future scenario in which black holes are the last objects in space. Penrose based his arguments on the fact that certain circular patterns in the cosmic microwave background point to objects that existed before the Big Bang. These objects would thus survive the death of. One universe and continue to exist in. The new one Penrose's theory therefore. Allows for the possibility of a much. Older cosmic legacy that goes beyond the. Age of our current. Universe the six black holes which would. Have to be older than the universe. Itself would then possibly be such. Relics and their existence would be. Explained Pen Rose theory did not come. About because of the new observations. The theory of the cyclical universe and. The surviving structures is already much. Older a popular end scenario for the. Cyclic universe is the idea that gigantic black holes will have sucked in almost all matter at the end when there are no more stars galaxies or other cosmic phenomena the universe collapses for reasons that cannot yet be fully explained and emerges anew from a new big bang if Penrose's theory explains the black holes astronomers would still have to discover the first real young stars and galaxies in James Webb's images. At some point a Nobel Prize for black holes before we look at whether James Webb might have discovered the first young galaxy after all let's take a look at what Sir Roger Penrose researched in his lifetime although his name may not have been as well known as that of Stephen Hawking or Albert Einstein until recently this researcher is one of the brightest minds of our time in 2020. Penrose was awarded the Nobel Prize in physics this was due to his groundbreaking contributions to Einstein's general theory of of relativity and to black hole research in the 1960s Penrose developed the Penrose Hawking Singularity Theorems together. With Stephen Hawking these theorems show that black holes are an inevitable consequence of Einstein's theory and must exist in our universe under certain conditions this was before the existence of black holes had even been proven. Roger Penrose has always been one of the scientists in his home country who could communicate complex mathematical Concepts in a way that both experts and laymen could understand his hypotheses, which often transcend the boundaries between physics, mathematics, and philosophy are also exciting twister. Theory, for example, is an approach that attempts to unify quantum mechanics and the general theory of relativity. Quantum mechanics deals with the tiniest parts of matter such as atoms and subatomic particles and explains how these parts behave general relativity on the other hand developed by Albert Einstein the describes how gravity works especially for large objects such as planets and stars Penos came up with a new way for the two to come together instead of 
focusing on points in space and time as is normally done in physics Penrose's theory uses twisters twisters are mathematical objects that are supposed to build a kind of bridge between the small world of quantum mechanics and the big world of general relativity another exciting theory of this man is the orc r or orchestrated objective reduction theory which deals with quantum processes in the microtubules of human neurons together with the anesthesiologist stuart hoff penrose worked on the nature of human consciousness and intelligence his findings are now becoming relevant again as they play a role in the development of of artificial intelligence and the assessment of the risks posed by AIS. After this excursion into the scientific world of Roger Penrose let's take a look at whether James Webb has discovered one of those young galaxies that researchers are so desperate to find extremely faint and distant galaxy when researchers identified one of the most distant and rather low luminosity galaxies in James Webb's images the chances of finally seeing an early star cluster with many protostars were quite good but again the researchers were disappointed because this galaxy is too faint to be full of bright superstars. The first stars that lit up the universe are called population three stars and researchers are convinced that they are super bright and incredibly large stars. After a very short lifetime they exploded and initiated a chemical change. In the cosmos the Supern NOI introduced completely new elements into the cosmos. In astronomy and cosmology all elements heavier than hydrogen and helium are actually referred to as metals this unusual classification dates back to two the time when astronomers only distinguished between these two lightest elements and all others the first stars that formed after the Big Bag were calculated to consist mainly of hydrogen and helium the two lightest and most abundant elements in the universe. Heavier elements such as iron nickel and copper did not yet exist however when the first proto-stars exploded they probably ejected parts of these elements into the cosmos thus enabling the existence of more stable stars the formation of planets and even life so wherever astronomers look all they find in James Webb's images of the early universe are galaxies that challenge our physical and mathematical picture of the beginning of the universe and time subscribe and look forward to the Upcoming video.